My name is James Freeland with the Texas Veterans Commission. This is a presentation being provided by Christus Health. We're going to discuss Skill Bridge and some different opportunities in the history of Christus Health. Uh, I'm joined with fellow veteran employee liaisons, James Wilson, Brian Seifert, uh, Ramon Carpio, and our VEL coach, Todd Arendt. And we'll begin with some housekeeping notes that James Wilson will, um, will put out. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is James Wilson. I'm a veteran employer liaison out in Corpus Christi. And just like um, James um, earlier said, prior to the uh, event starting, just a little housekeeping notes. The only individuals that are, have their mics on are the Corpus, uh, I'm sorry, the Christus Health representatives. And um, we will hold our Q&A towards the end. But if there is a very important question that you really want to ask pertaining to the subject that is at hand presently, you can type your question in chat. And just to um, go over, of course, hit that bubble with the lines in it and type in your chat. We do have a TBC personnel that will monitor that and we will get that question answered to the best of the of our um, their ability. So again, um, keep mics and cameras off so that way we can have um, great bandwidth for the presenters. Other than that, I'm just going to pass it over to Eric and Tony. Hello, good afternoon. Oh, um, one, one more thing I did want to add. We do, we may have uh, another employer or two in the room. Uh, we just ask that they um, are just here to, uh, you know, to to see the how this showcase is going on, but they're not going to speak or input any uh, details in the chat. Thank you. Good. Sorry about that, Eric. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for sharing that with us. Yes, sir. Um, I do want to I just want to mention that I have the slides for the uh, presentation, but I'm unable to share my screen. The option to share my screen is grayed out, so I'm not sure if someone wants I'm gonna to send that over to you right now. So. Allow me. OK, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, really, really appreciate everyone taking the time to attend this showcase. Uh, Myself, Tony, Lewis, and Bill are very excited to be able to take this time and and to share our uh, our wonderful organization with you, or as much information about it as we can um, during this time. Um, a little bit about me, real quick, before I start is uh, I'm prior service military. Um, have the badge to prove it. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but I am a Army veteran, much like uh, some of the other guys on the on this uh, presentation, uh, Lewis and Tony. Um, but uh, we we are very uh, you know veteran veteran friendly organization. As you can see, uh, we are I believe the only healthcare organization in San Antonio and probably a lot of other places that have a DOD skill bridge uh, partnership established for our veterans. Um, anyway, so I just can't say, uh, you know, how happy I am to be a part of this. And I'm sure that my fellow colleagues and, and fellow veterans probably feel the same way as you guys can see with their head nods and stuff. So um, if there's ever anything we can do for you, conversations or whatnot, you know, please feel free and feel comfortable to reach out to us. OK. Um, I guess Tony, you want a brief introduction? Absolutely. Thank you, Texas Veterans Commission, for allowing us to do this again. Um, we, we've done this a couple of times now, and just as Eric mentioned, this is absolutely something near and dear to our heart. Any opportunity that um, we have to be able to reach out and communicate with um, fellow individuals like yourselves, like I said, Luis, Bill, Eric, and myself, um, we're all prior military. Um, I'm retired Army. Um, this is my 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 first civilian job uh, out of the military. I know everybody is in a similar situation. Um, and as that finish line gets closer and closer, things get a little more scarier with every passing day, the uncertainty. Um, some of you might even have a plan A, a plan B, Sometimes those aren't going to work out, though, and then it's what do I do next? Um, we're here to give you some information about Chris's health um, so we can be that plan A, plan B, or if you need a plan C, um, we're always here. Very veteran friendly. Like I said, um, all four of us, this is something that um, we take very serious because we were all in your shoes not that long ago. It seems just like yesterday, but um, 
I'm going to turn it over to uh, Luis or Bill if you want to introduce yourself briefly and great to see everybody. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Uh, we definitely want to say thank you for joining, and uh, we hope to have really good information to pass um, about Christus, about our DOD Skill Bridge program, and some other things that we have available to you. My name is Luis Sepulveda, and I'm uh, also retired Army as well. Uh, and it's just a, a humbling uh, place to be to be able to help other veterans uh, find employment, find a Skill Bridge opportunity, or or any other thing that we could help with. I'll pass it on to Bill to allow him to introduce himself. Sure. Thanks, Luis. Uh, yeah, I'm Bill Kruber. Um, I'd like to thank the TVC as well, James and James. Thank you for uh, put, helping us put this on and spreading the word about Krista's health. Um, I just, my, my tidbit is I'm, I'm retired Navy, served 20 years. I got out right into COVID. Um, this is not my first job. I hopped one or two other ones, did some football coaching, and I, I finally came back to healthcare as a passion of mine to just to get back to service for others. Um, just wanted to speak a little bit on the family atmosphere of Krista's Health. I, I've been welcomed ever since I got here, and I, I would say that's the number one reason why I continue to want to support Krista's Health and the Skillbridge program and our all of our growing and rapidly growing veteran programs. Oh, thank you, Eric. For sure. <clears throat> All right. Um, if anyone has any questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, in the chat, but we will have a Q and A at the end of uh, this presentation. So, without further ado, let's get the show on the road. Uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. And excuse my email. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. And this should be working correctly. Um, I can't see anyone, but I just want to make sure you guys can see our slide, our opening slide. We can see. All right. So as we've already mentioned, this presentation will be on Christus Health and the DOD Skill Bridge program. Um, we'll be talking about our uh, about Christus Health, basically our our history, our mission, our vision. Uh, value skill bridge, uh, where we're located, and uh, our next steps information about us. So much like the military, uh, Christus Health has a tremendous, tremendous amount of incredible history. Um, I don't think that I would do it justice by, you know, attempting to tell you about it myself. Um, I'd hate to leave something out, so uh, it, rather I'd, I'd like to read off a little bit about um, our history to you. Um, it is the the conception of Christus Health started by a calling, you know, a calling of one incredible person reaching out for help. And that legacy lives through what we do today. Um, and therefore, I want to read it to you as well. But in 1866, Texas, an incredibly large state, was on the brink of growth. The entire state was under a single Catholic diocese with Claude Marie de Bouy serving as bishop. During long, oh, sorry, <clears throat> sorry about that. During long, tiring, tiring journeys on horseback throughout the state, Bishop de Bouy came in contact with illness, disease, and poverty of staggering proportions. He turned to his native France to seek help for those who were suffering. In his homeland, he issued a call for religious sisters to immigrate to Texas. In a letter to his friend, Mother Angelique, superior, superior of the monastery of the Order of the Incarnate Word and Blessed Sacrament in Lyons, that was in France, he wrote, our Lord Jesus Christ, suffering in the persons of a, mu a multitude of the sick and infirm of every kind, seeks relief at your hands. Mother Angelique found three young sisters to answer, answer the bishop's call. On September 23rd, 1866, the three nuns received the habit of the new con congregation and the name Sister Blandine of Jesus, Sister Joseph, Joseph of Jesus, and Sister St. Angie. Uh, the two days later, left they left for Texas. On their voyage across the ocean, abroad a, steam, a steamship, they endured weeks of 15 to 20 foot seas 
and a hurricane, but arrived safely in Galveston on October 25, 1866. Here in the growing city of immigrants and commerce, the, the three founded the Congregation of, of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. On April 1st, 1867, they opened Charity Hospital, the first Catholic hospital in Texas. The increase in the congregation's membership and the urgent need throughout Texas resulted in the expansion of the sisters' work. In May of 1869, the cholera epidemic in the growing city of San Antonio prompted Bishop Dubuis to seek the help from the Galveston, Galveston sisters. The three sisters responded, Mother Madeline, uh, Madeline Sister St. Pierre, and Sister Agnes. In March 1869, they left Galveston by stave, stagecoach for San Antonio, traveling more than 280 80 miles on the roads that were essentially nothing more than wagon ruts. When they arrived, they found that one of the buildings that one of the building intended for their use had burned to the ground. Undaunted by the tragedy and fortified by their faith, the sisters set out to rebuild the burned hospital. With our ar uh, arduous effort, the two story adobe structure was completed by the end of the year. The hospital consisted of the wards and private rooms for the sick, a small chapel, and apartments for use as for use as a uh, as a coven. It was named Santa Rosa Infirmary in 1999 to strengthen their ability to reach out to those in need and provide the best health care. The two systems became part of Christus Health. Um, so as I mentioned before, just like the incredible history of the military, um, Christus itself has a tremendous amount of history. And um, essentially, you know, many of us answer a calling every day um, and our calling and part of our mission, our core values and our vision is is to help those in need. And that's what we strive to do every uh, every single day in our work at Christus Health. And this is the beautiful history. Um, where it started. Um, our mission is to extend the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Christmas Health is a not-for-profit, uh, faith-based Catholic um, organization. Our vision at Christmas Health, a Catholic healing ministry, uh, will be a leader, a partner, and an advocate in the creation of innovative health and wellness solutions that improve the lives of individuals and community so that all may experience God's healing presence and love. As you can see here, our core values are dignity, integrity, excellence, compassion, and stewardship. Um, these are uh, values that we do our jobs uh, by, you know, we do our jobs every day with, with these core values in mind. My favorite being excellence, but the rest are right there with it as well. Um, at Christus Health, we deliver a complete experience uh, that respects the individual, and we serve our communities with dignity and with a great deal of admiration. Um, we are, are uh, I know there's a lot of organizations out there that, you know, care about patients, um, but we really perform every, every task, you know, uh, patient care, even us in the administrative side or the human resources side. We really perform our jobs with our patients in mind, with our staff in mind, our associates in mind, um, and uh, in a compassionate um, in a compassionate manner. Uh, Christus Health is located um, throughout a significant chunk of the world, um, as you can see here by this map. Uh, we are located across four states in the United States, New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Um, I believe we have over 600 uh, different locations throughout the, this entire map here, um, but we're also located across seven states in Mexico and countries like Chile and Colombia. Um, but we, uh, our reach is, is not just in, in San Antonio, but we spanned over a couple of a uh, few countries and, and states in the United States. 
Santa Rosa Health um, Health Ministry. Uh, we currently have over 2,600 associates, if not more. Uh, five major facilities. These are uh, the pictures you see here are Christus Health uh, or Santa Rosa Hospital, San Marcos. Uh, the top right image is Santa Rosa Hospital Medical Center. Um, in the middle, you'll see Santa Rosa Hospital, Alamo Heights. Down at the bottom, you'll see Santa Rosa Hospital, New Braunfels. And down in the left corner, you'll see Santa Rosa uh, Hospital, Westover Hills. Uh, but well, these are our five major facilities. We do have other um, standalone emergency rooms and clinics associated with each of these uh, facilities. Um, so there are other places, but these are five of our major hospitals. Um, we've had over 176,000 different encounters. Um, we have eight, over 1,800 physicians on the medical staff. And amongst these facilities in Santa Rosa, these are five major hospitals. We have 484 or over 480 staff uh, staff beds. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this beautiful mural downtown San Antonio, uh, but uh, Christus Children's, now known as Christus Children's, formerly known as the, Christi, uh, the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, um, is also a part of Christus Health. Um, this beautiful mural here um, oversees, I believe, I-10, uh, but it's located downtown in the heart of San Antonio. At Christus Children's, we currently have over 1,300 plus associates. We've had over 186,000 uh, encounters, uh, 541 physicians on the medical staff, and 144 over 144 beds here. Uh, but this beautiful hospital, this is the only a hundred percent. This is actually a the only one hundred percent dedicated to Children's Hospital and uh, and all of Christus Health. Um, so very, very, we're very, very proud to have it a part of uh, the Santa Rosa Ministry. Um, Christus Health Santa Rosa uh, in all our facilities and major hospitals. Um, as you can see here, we have tons of accreditations and awards. Uh, many of these awards we're extremely proud of, um, but here they are listed uh, for you to to check out. But uh, we are highly accredited and award uh, have a great deal of awards. Um, Christus Health, like many other um, organizations, we offer you know comprehensive medical, dental, and vision. Um, you know, just like a lot of other places. The one thing I will tell you for those coming out, like Tony mentioned before, you know, coming out of the military, uh, something that was really different for me um, was having to pay for insurance. <laughs> uh, so if you were on the verge of separating from the military uh, and transitioning out, just keep that in mind. Uh, but Christus Health does offer a, uh, you know, I think very great, you know, very good packages, cost effective for sure. Uh, but just like a lot of places, medical, dental, and vision. Um, we also offer pay time off here, which is 180 hours on an eight-hour workday. That computes to about 22 and a half days off per month on an eight-hour workday, just to give you perspective. Um, these balances do increase uh, based on your length of service with Christus Health. So that, uh, uh, that hourly amount does increase every year. Uh, what I really like about our benefits package is this is not something you earn over time, but rather it's presented, it's given to you on your very first day and on your anniversary year every year up front. Um, Christus does have set holidays, uh, but you choose, you know, if you're working on the clinical side, you may be, you might not be able to take days off, things like that. So you'll get to choose when you take that time off. Um, same as cultural holidays, if the offices aren't closed on the non-clinical side, um, you know, you can choose to take, you know, certain days off or not if you participate in those cultural holidays. Um, the 180 hours is an all-inclusive bank, so it is also used for like time off. I mean, I'm sorry for sick time, um, but not, but but anyway, it's still a great benefit, uh, one that I very much love. Um, we also have a 403B max savings plan where Christus does match you a percentage of what you save if if you choose to save. Um, we are a not-for-profit, therefore it is a 403B match savings plan. Uh, 
We also other we also offer other benefits like tuition assistance. Uh, we have incredible programs like the Rise Mentorship Program and Emerging Leaders Program. Um, managers and above have to go through a, a leadership foundations uh, program where it's it's much like a developmental program for a year. Um, so Christus does invest a lot of time in education um, into his it, it, into uh, its associates um, for that developmental um, aspect. Um, as you can see here, we offer you know employee discounts and stuff, uh, flights, electronics, things like that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, there are a lot of great benefits to being part of Christus Health. Um, Christus is is huge on associate recognition, and one way we do this is through our one Christus competencies. Um, leaders and above can recognize associates with uh, a points based system called kudos. And for these reasons here, you know, managers and above can award these kudos uh, for an associate who demonstrates personal growth and awareness, effective communication, for an associate who promotes uh, promotes inclusivity, drives results, uh, a value-based recognition, change leadership, for all of these reasons here. Um, and associates can use those points to redeem gift cards, um, to make purchases for items through our uh, one Christus competency catalog, uh, but this is just another great way that Christus um, does a tremendous uh, does does a great deal, you know, of of recognition for uh, for uh, the associates. You know, it's it's always great to be told that hey, you're doing a great job, uh, but to get you know to get an award like this or a reward, you know, in the form of of points that can be can be used to purchase uh, something, you know, of you know, financial value, you know, is 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 incredible. So I've redeemed plenty in my time. Uh, so really happy that, you know, Christus does this. But again, this is another way where managers can and and peers, you know, even if you're not a manager above, you can recognize one of your colleagues or uh, one associate can recognize another and uh, a manager can go in and, and award kudos and points, you know, off of those nominations. So as you can imagine, this system is used for a lot of different recognition and, and to celebrate the great work that our associates do on a daily basis. Um, ways to learn. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, I briefly talked about the Emerging Leaders Program and um the mentorship program that we have and the leaders foundation but in addition to that christus offers you know other ways for our associates to learn um, these these online learning methods are called genesis learning and health stream um, we do we do conduct some on-site training there is a clinical edu education portion when uh, clinical staff um, are hired to our our organization and then christus does offer tuition assistance programs um that associates can can take advantage of as well all right and that completes my portion of uh the presentation i look forward to any questions um you know that come up at the end of this presentation but um louis sepulveda or sepi is going to talk about the skill bridge program thank you eric yes sir very well said um on everything we have here, Christus. So to add to that, we also have uh, the SkillBridge program as well. Um, so for anybody that's on active duty and looking to do an internship with the company, as long as they have, they're within that 180 days window, their last 180 days windows, they can do an internship through SkillBridge um, and through Christus. So we are DOD vetted. Um, that means any branch of service can actually go through and do the uh, Skillbridge program. Uh, so we don't only just target clinical. If you are a non-clinical wanting to do a clinical uh, internship, you you could definitely do that. Uh, if you're already clinical, then this is a great way to match your skills with the Christus culture and be able to uh, marry those together. That way you get to kind of see what the culture is like, how we do things. Um, and then of course, on the back end, you know, we always try to see what positions might be open to, to offer you to those uh, offer those opportunities. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Uh, here's some program highlights. So uh, we were approved uh, January 29th of last year. Our first DOD skill bridge uh, associate came on board May 9th. So you can see it took us about five months to actually bring in somebody, but we took our time to make sure that, as Eric said, whoever comes through is going to experience a really good uh, experience through Christus and experience the Christus culture. So that's the reason why it took us a little bit uh, to make sure the foundation was good, the leaders were put in place, everything was going to be good. So when we brought people in, it was going to be a smooth transition from them to be able to, be able to come in and experience um, that that culture through the Skillbridge program. Um, and as, as a matter of fact, the first Skillbridge person is still with us. She converted over to a full-time associate at Christmas and uh, just had a one-year anniversary uh, back in May. Uh, we've had about 47 um, associates complete the program. Out of those 47, we've had, and actually that number is incorrect. We have had a total of 64. Um, I guess I didn't update the slide, but yes, it's actually 64 people that's gone through um, the Skillbridge program and 14 have uh, transitioned over and have uh, gotten a full-time uh, position with us. Uh, we do have about 32 coming on board between now and uh, November 30th. Uh, and some of the some of the positions that we do have or opportunities, uh, we have patient care techs, we have registered nurses, supply chain, uh, radiology techs, unit clerks, uh, EKG techs, HR. We've had uh, also a couple of uh, registered respiratory therapists uh, come through. And we've even had a, a few recruiters come through the program as well. Uh, next slide, please. All right, before I get into this, I also uh, wanted to add that we just partnered up with the Hiring Our Heroes and specifically the Military Spouse uh, Fellowship Program. So not only are we doing the um, skill bridge for the active duty component, but we're also helping out the military sp spouses. Uh, and of course, their H HOH, they can go through to two different avenues. They can get direct hired. That's where they would work with Tony and Eric and their recruiting team. Uh, and if they would want to do an internship through the HOH, it's a 12 week internship. One week, they would do it with the HOH, 11 weeks with Christus, and it is paid through the DOD. Um, and you would work four days uh, from Monday to Thursday, eight hour days with Christus. And then on the Friday, you would do educational things with the HOH. Uh, Bill, am I leaving anything out? Um, Luis, no, I don't think you're leaving anything out. Uh, so you, you did bring up that program. Um, both of these programs are new to Christus. It, um, like Luis said, one's a year old, one's within the past three months or so. Um, it just goes to show that um, the intensity for supporting veterans is, is growing at Christmas Health. That's just kind of what I want to point out. With why I'm, why I'm, like I said before, so happy to be here on the call. Um, I, I asked in the chat if there's any active duty on the call, and and I think Brian answered answered. There's uh, a few there possibly, and so for you active duty folks. Um, if you're able to use SkillBridge, I would recommend using it, whether it's with Christus or not. But if you can uh, utilize Christus's SkillBridge program, like Louise said, we did take our time building it out, uh, making sure that it's a great experience, making sure you have a mentor leading you through. Um, reach out to any of us. We've got that career site there. Um, we've been talking for a while. Are there any questions out there in the crowd? You want to raise your hand or uh, just put something in the chat? Uh, whether it's about Christus or your transition or you've been out of work for three years, whatever the case, um, we're, we're here to help you out. Oh, look at that. Did you see that, Luis? Um, yes, I did. Thank you, Jerry. Looks like Jerry Johnson chimed in. He's uh, working with Wendy Banks. He's the chaplain. That's great. Hopefully we see you in December. Yes, I believe one of our skill bridge recruiters is already uh, we're working with them as well. Um, Bill, while we're here, would you also like to yeah. uh, educate people about the uh, veteran program that we have as well? The, yeah, the monthly thank one? you. 
<laughs> Thank you. I had that written down. So I had two other things to bring up is one like I just see I'm just uh, looking at the chat there. I see that Clint is active duty and he wasn't able to use Skillbridge. It looks like James is trying to join us, but um, so I, we're going to have a veteran hiring fair coming up. But what I wanted to point out, which is what Luis is asking me to talk about, is our veteran peer group. So we started a veteran peer group as well. So once a month we get together, whether it's virtually at, at the start, it's virtually, we're going to um, spread it to each campus, to each ministry, each um, basically like in Santa Rosa, in, in San Antonio, there's several hospitals, so it won't necessarily be at every hospital. You might meet together in person at one of them, but we get together to A, talk about how's it going at Christus Health and what needs are, are there, what, how can we help each other? Who can we reach out to if we need something? But then also just to have a knowledgeable group of folks who know what you're going through and you can get together uh, outside of work and discuss things besides, uh, you know, whatever's taking place inside the walls of the hospital. Um, Jerry asked, how long are the skill bridge typically? There's been a lot of change throughout the skill bridge program itself, DOD wide. Um, the, all the different policies came out this year, so they're Time frame is is zero to 179 days. I think we're seeing between 90 and 120 to 150. Um, nothing really up to 179 days, but it can't be longer than that. Just to chime in on that, we um, we don't do cohorts with the Skillbridge program, so we work with every individual service member on their dates and their availability and what they're wanting to do, uh, and then also where we can place them as well. Uh, if we have nothing else, we can go into the next slide, please. So that's the contact information right there. If you want to take a picture of the uh, QR code, that right there will take you directly to the Skillbridge webpage uh, for Christus, and they'll have you fill out a short form. Uh, the recruiters are always looking at it, uh, checking their inbox daily, and uh, either Christy or LJ or Rick will reach out to you um, and then uh, they'll send you a calendar invite so then they can discuss the opportunities that we have and answer any questions you may have about the Skillbridge program here at Christus. And that, I don't know if you want to leave that up for a little bit or move on to the next slide. There we go. Um, just so everyone's aware, um, this is the Santa Rosa Talent Acquisition Leadership Team. Um, as you can see, we're headed by a wonderful talent acquisition director. Uh, her name is Jennifer Harris. These are some awesome people to maybe connect with on LinkedIn. Just going to tap the floor a couple of times there. <laughs> uh, myself, uh, manager of talent acquisition, I oversee recruitment for Christus Children's and Santa Rosa Hospital, Westover Hills. Uh, Tony's extensive list of <laughs> uh, facilities that he oversees as a recruiting manager, Lewis, and then this wonderful uh, human being at the very bottom, Vanessa. Um, she she helps us uh, with our onboarding manager talent operations, uh, but this is our, our our emails are there for your use. If you want to contact us, um, you know, you know, if you want to reach out to us, um, feel free and reach out to myself, Tony and uh, and Lewis. I do want to mention um, and, and again, thank you everybody for for joining us on this call. As Bill mentioned earlier, though, big picture is we want to see everybody wind up somewhere to to successfully transition out of the military. Like I said, we were all there. We were all there. And that is the main point of this. Just to give you another option, just as Bill mentioned, if you don't do Skillbridge with Christus, please take the opportunity to do it elsewhere. Um, in hindsight, Absolutely. I, I wish I would have taken advantage of that opportunity, but I did what probably a lot of y'all that are still active duty are doing, and that's working up to the finish line because my commander wants me to, my first sergeant wants me to, so on and so forth, and I'm a soldier and this is what I got to do. It's time to start taking care of yourself and, and start thinking about the what's next. It's coming. It's coming for everybody. Please take care of yourself please take advantage of all the opportunities that are available um, as you make this transition. For example, the, the, the multitude of, of resume workshops that become available. Please do not have your re resume reading like your last NCOER, reading like your last evaluation. Um, that is not going to benefit you. 
take advantage of those opportunities. For some of you, it's been 20 plus years since you've written a resume. Um, not that all our military accomplishments are not noteworthy. They absolutely are, but they need to be translated. And um, a lot of times, many of us that have um, been prey to the Army writing style for, you know, a decade plus need need some help in that realm. So please take advantage of those opportunities. Please seriously consider going the route of SkillBridge. Um, it is a great program. Uh, again, we are the only healthcare provider in the Corpus Christi San Antonio area that does have a program in place. Um, it is something that uh, Luis and Bill hit the ground running with and it has exploded and, and it is continuing to expand. It is a great program. A lot of people have got their foot in the door. If you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a, a, a CNA, so on and so forth. I'm not a healthcare practitioner. We are just like a a military organization, you know, some, some a, a, a very easy parallel to make. We we need finance folks. We need IT personnel. Um, we need security folks. Anything you can think of, we need that within our facilities. All those uh, behind the scene positions that are available, uh, those are probably very applicable to many of you individuals who, who perhaps do not have a healthcare specific background. So, um, Please tuck this information in your back pocket, all our all our contact information. Hope to hear from some of y'all. And absolutely, I wish every single one of you the best of luck in your upcoming transition. For those of you that have already uh, made an exit, um, christuscareers.org, excuse me, careers.christushealth.org. Um, please, please strongly consider Christus Health. I'll shut up now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else from Christus Health have anything they would like to add? No. Yes, yes, James, yes. I do. Um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and add the link to the job page here. Uh, yes, I, I, I put that see. on there. I narrowed it down to the San Antonio local area to include okay. Universal oh, City. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to go ahead and if you had that slide available, if you want to add um, or pull up the PowerPoint or whatever it is, the there we go. That's what yes, I was looking there. for. Okay. Yes, perfect. there it is. So I wanted to talk. Yes, if you could mention mm -hmm. that, we are going to have a, uh, a job fair at the uh, Children's Christmas Children's Hospital. That is the date. It's going to be July thirteenth. Uh, it's going to be from ten to two o'clock. It's going to be and there's the address. So I think Eric would be able to explain uh, the building a little bit better. But there, if you just ask, where's the Center for Children's and Families? Uh, everybody will be able to direct you to that building. It will be on the fifth floor. Uh, and we will have TBC as a guest and also Bear County uh, to help you with educational stuff about your benefits with the military. So I just wanted to share that right there. Um, this is going to be a fantastic opportunity to get right in front of one of our recruiters. Uh, Tony and I oversee a, total, a team of about 14, 15 uh, recruiting experts. Um, we will have the majority of them available uh, to meet with, with every veteran that shows up or every transitioning veteran that shows up for this event. Um, Tony, myself, uh, Lewis will all be present. Um, but, but basically, you know, you park in the visitor's parking lot immediately next to um, that visitor's parking lot, it, and this is downtown near Christus Children's, by the way. Um, but in the visitor's parking lot, right next to the visitor's parking lot, you're gonna you'll you'll you have the uh, center for children and families. But on the fifth floor, uh, we have the auditorium reserved, and we have a whole bunch of conference rooms reserved. Um, but this will be a great opportunity to come in. Um, if you want to apply to a position ahead of time, fantastic. If not, you just want to come in and talk to a recruiter. Uh, this is a great time to do that. Uh, talk to them about openings. If if all works out well with the recruiters, um, they will schedule interviews for you and these hiring leaders um, for the positions that you are interested in. Um, so again, you know, take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. We'd love to see you come in and uh, participate. And if you if uh, if you can. Please spread the word, you know, share uh, this event is for all veterans in in San Antonio or whoever can make it.
So that would include, Eric, so, that would also include uh, veteran families, correct? Yes, military spouses, yep. military yes. military spouses, children. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Anyone? Yeah, we're we're gonna be there. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, come by and meet with us, and uh, yeah, you know, we'll do our part and uh, in helping those, you know, uh, who are looking for a position with Christus. Perfect. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions or anything they would like to add for the meeting? If there are any questions regarding like application process or if you'd like for us to share some like tips and tricks, um, I know we got about 15 minutes. So um, Tony and I, you know, oversee recruitment under uh, Jennifer Harris. Um, so we see, oversee all of the hiring, you know, I just want to kind of emphasize on that a little bit. Um, you know, so if anyone has any questions, um, by all means, you know, feel free and ask us. Um, that's what we're here for as well. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, we're being as helpful as we can. And I've got, I've got to tell you that they are extremely helpful. You know, a while back we had a chaplain that was looking for, um, you know, limited hours. And so she was reaching out to Luis and, you know, the recruiters over there and just trying to see, you know, and, and they were trying to make it work for her. Um, it came down to the fact that she wanted even less hours than that. So, you know, it wasn't an opportunity that they could actually provide for her. Um, but they are really willing to assist you, as they said, with, their with your transition or your move into a healthcare industry or anything like that. And, you know, you can always send in your resume to us and we can provide it to them. You know, if you're, you know, you've been a lab technician for your entire, you know, 20 years, you know, in, in, in the military or something, and you want to transition into something else, they can look at some other valuable skills that you have that can relate into another uh, job field as well. And in our profession, just want to say, you know, in recruitment for uh, recruitment is different, you know, especially within different industries. Corporate recruiting is one thing, you know, healthcare um, recruitment is very similar, but you know, for example, I recruited for the army for a long time and um, it, it it's very different, you know, um, even from outside of recruitment now that I do now. But I do want to just say that, like, you know, reviewing resumes is something that I've done, you know, for a long time. So if anybody has any questions about just any of those minor things or wants just input, I mean, let us know we're here for that. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to 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 help as much as we can. So just let us know. Absolutely, and we have quite a few career advisors possibly on the on the call as well. Do any of you have any uh, specific questions you would have for a recruiter, the applicant, you know, um, you know how to apply or anything like that? All right, so this meeting is being recorded, so we will be able to, you know, share this. We do have a hand up. Yep. Okay, hey, yeah, guys, this is uh, Clint Alanis here. I really appreciate y'all's time, uh, and I just sent out some some LinkedIn connections. Um, y'all spoke about it earlier about there being opportunities in the non medical field, which which is where I I spend most of my career uh, as I'm I'm moving towards retirement here shortly. Uh, would appreciate any any additional uh, advice you would give on somebody making themselves competitive, or you know, what can we do to learn more and be be more helpful for y'all's industry if we're if we're non-medical and looking to still participate thanks um if you guys are okay with it <laughs> i'll take this one um so I, i'm a big believer in reviewing i've reviewed re resumes for a long time as you guys can imagine you know so review them quickly and as you know as incredibly as well as i can um but with that said, you know, I believe that any position you're going, you're applying to, your resume really needs to be tailored. You know, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, recruiting for the Army, recruiting in healthcare, recruiting in, in the IT industry. Me as a recruiter, you know, my skills are going to be different for every one of those industries in which I apply. So uh, my resume should really be tailored specifically to that position you know that you're applying um, i'm not saying have 50 or you know 30 40 20 resumes but what i'm really trying to say is is i would review the job description 
And many of those skills we possess, you know, coming out of the military, um, the method in which they're communicated or the words that they're communicated in uh, might not be the same. So reviewing the resume, for example, I mean, the job description of the position and then taking those skills from that job description that you possess and communicating them on your resume um, is going is going is going to help out tremendously. Um, that would be one that would be one tip uh, that I would share. Uh, can you answer your question again, Clint? Yeah, no worries. Just just if there was anything, uh, you know, like a lot of positions require a certification or, you know, if y'all are more interested in having people that are PMP or that have, you know, some kind of SHRM certification, again, just just what y'all see in a regular basis that that would be appropriate for the healthcare industry or for the hospital. Yeah, so I would think tailoring your um, your resume to 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 list those requirements per the job description. Um, as far as education certifications, if there are items on a uh, position description or job description that are required, um, there is really no no work around it. OK, um, those, you know, we do, you know, we do require some uh, certifications for non-clinical positions, um, but some of them will read preferred. If they're preferred, then they're preferred. If they are required by the position, then they must absolutely have, you must have that to apply. Um, but uh, that would be my biggest recommendation is just tailoring that resume. I've seen a lot of veteran resumes in the past. And fortunately, I understand, you know, I understand a lot of, the writing style so I can easily work through it and, you know, um, and fairly consider that person because I have that background, um, you know, and that's what we ultimately want to do. So uh, to help, you know, to help yourself out or any veteran, you know, to help, you know, help out, I would really review that job description and communicate your skills as best as possible um, as it relates to those descriptions. Hope that answers your question, Tony. Do you have anything? And again, I do want to stress, please take advantage of the opportunities, um, the multitude of, pro of, of opportunities to get help with your resume, even if it's just with that initial resume. And, and just as Eric mentioned, you can tweak that, that overview at the beginning, um, but you want to look for positions where you can check the required boxes. Um, as Eric just mentioned, when licensure and education is involved, there's really no circumventing those requirements. So don't apply for those positions. Apply for the ones where your skill set matches, where you can check all the blocks. Also, for those of you who may be considering um, additional education certifications, those those requirements that are listed in those job descriptions, those can give you the blueprint for what it is that you are wanting to pursue and uh, give you the information as far as what what is the educational background, what is the licensure required to fill these particular positions that you do have interest in, something akin to what you may have been doing in the military. A lot of times um, what we were doing in the military does not require specific licensure and you're going to find as you transition into the civilian sector that um, oftentimes that's not the case. Though we may have been doing something in the military, once we get out and we want to pursue that same avenue um, in the civilian sector, a lot of times there will be um, some some particulars uh, required of us that more often than not we can very easily accomplish. Um, you just have to know what what direction to go in? Absolutely, but please, please don't work um, your your current position uh, until the bell goes off. Um, I, I just want to stress: take advantage of your time, take advantage of your uh, terminal leave, take advantage of Skillbridge if it's there. Um, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, don't do what I did. But it worked out. But uh, yeah, there was a little bit of luck involved too. Any, any other questions for us? 
Yeah, Tony, the Eric, and to all, this is James. Um, real quick question. On top of everything that y'all spoke about, the uh, resume and the application process, what is the time frame that we're looking at as far as when an individual applies for said position, give or take, depending on, you know, the time frame, I guess you could say. What is the basic time span if uh, James Wilson sees a position, applies for it to wherever he gets a response, whether yay, nay, or anything uh, uh, indifferent? So so typically after uh, our recruiters have about 48 hours, um, it typically happens a lot sooner than that um, to review an application, a, a brand new application that comes in. If it's not happening, let us know. We'll coach, uh, coach teach, and mentor through that uh, process. But <laughs> um, what will happen after that, and this is what's going to happen on the 13th as well, is uh, after the recruiter reviews the application, they are during they're going to reach out for a phone interview for a phone screen with you what we call a phone screen that conversation typically takes about 15 minutes uh, but during that call they they want to discuss your eligibility for the position in which you applied um, and they want to uh, you know understand what your compensation expectations are um, and if all works out well then they will move forward and present your information application to the uh, hiring manager. So after that 48 hours, you should look to schedule about a you know 15 minute conversation with one of the recruiters, and then probably within that week, you you know hopefully an interview um, with the leader uh, who is hiring for the position. Um, after interviews are completed uh, and a candidate is selected, that can typically take about a week or so, two weeks. Um, then we move forward into the onboarding process and that onboarding process, you know, can take maybe another, you know, two weeks um, to happen where we conduct drug screening, background checks, uh, verification of education, credentials and such, uh, and we get you set up for a start date. All right, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, <clears throat> does anybody else have any other questions? Eric, Luis, and Luis, Tony, thank you so much for coming back on today. Um, you, know, like, you know, like Tony said earlier, you know, you've been on here a few times. Um, you know, we've had you support out there in, uh, in Christa Spawn as well with uh, James Wilson's area out there in Corpus Christi. Um, love to have you again sometime soon. Uh, Thank you so much for your time. If